Hey everybody! My video is starting. Hi everybody! Hey guys! Handy Andy here, Discover Aquatic Shop. Got Cow Turtle here. Yes, Nick. The Eel Daddy. Got some eels. So, uh, this is episode one of our new uh, live stream podcast. Uh, we'll also be uploading these videos to YouTube afterwards. Uh, this is all kind of an online uh, presence collaboration we're trying to uh, get started here. We've, we've recently started shipping fish uh, across the country. So uh, with that, I just want to bring more to the table. Uh, and not just, you know, here are these four or five walls of, uh, of the actual store. Uh, and for those of you who we've sent things to, kind of get to know the two of us a little bit better. Who are we actually buying our stuff from? So... Um, I'm Handy Andy. This is Nick. Call me Old Daddy. Yeah, Nick, Cow Turtle, Old Daddy, whatever you want to call me. But yeah, so uh, like we said, kind of episode one here of just uh, of many. We want to bring in several different people, resources uh, from the different sides: saltwater, freshwater, uh, a little bit of everything. Some some importers that uh, that are bringing stuff in from different countries. Uh, we got biota lined up that, you know, they've been uh, breeding the yellow tangs, uh, potter's angels. They got some really cool stuff in the works. Uh, so we'll bring them aboard to just kind of kind of let you guys know what we get to see uh, behind the scenes look of, uh, of kind of how you get what's in your glass box at home to your glass box. Yeah. Yeah. There's lots of interesting different like parts of the hobby and how a fish gets from the Philippines to here in two days. And even for us, there's different avenues that we can take uh, as well of, of, they call it transship. So some of that goes directly from Bali, the Philippines, uh, Indonesia, anywhere over there, lands in LA and goes through cuffs, customs to make sure that everything is, is what it should be. Uh, and then they rebag it and ship it right over to us. So there really is no transport time uh, or sitting time. And then there are the other avenue of the wholesaler where they get everything in from the different countries. And we get to a little bit more of a selection that we can pick from. Yeah. yeah. It's always interesting seeing all those price lists of what we can actually stock and sell and what we can actually is out there to get. You'd be amazed at the, the wild and crazy different things that we have on the list. Uh, I was just looking at one the other day and they had a uh, kind of a yellow Scopus Tang hybrid that would have been around uh, fifteen twenty thousand dollars or so yeah. so um yeah i think the most impressive one i was seeing was uh they had to like pre-order it and we'll go get it for you uh but they had spotted eagle rays that you could order which is about basically a slightly smaller manta ray um, a six foot wingspan a big open water ray so what most of you think is a large tank in the hobby uh, doesn't even cover the wingspan yeah. of this kind of fish. Yeah, uh, a 180 gallon, 200 gallon tank, that's a medium tank to me, and I'm sure there's some people that think that's small. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've got a few that we deal with that, uh, that we could probably put our snorkel gear on and, and yeah. get into. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so you know, back to the beginning, just kind of wanted to let you guys peek in on what we do here. Uh, we, we have a good time, there's no doubt about that, <laughs> but uh, uh, I guess for me, my I've always had a fish tank my whole life. Even when I was growing up as a kid, um, I, I don't remember a time that I didn't have a fish tank of some sort. Mm -hmm. And just, I, some about it just drew me into what it. What was stocking on that first tank? Uh, my my dad always loved dwarf garamis. So That's a good one. If we didn't have one, we, we would always go to the store and get another one. But I think that was probably my... Like the one fish I remember always looking forward to getting. That's probably my go-to, buy this fish, it's pretty and it'll live anything. Yeah, yeah, they're, uh, they're, they're in the beta easy. family, so. Yeah, they have that, what is it, the, the lung breed or the yeah, air lab breathing? labyrinth organ. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, basically a beta that is peaceful with everything. Yeah, um, but yeah so I, I got into it as a, as a small child and had a 10-gallon tank in my in my room for years and years and then... You know, when I got to be that 15, 16, 17 range, you know, then I went out and bought a 55 and thought I was the king of the world because... Yeah, something big. Yeah, I mean, yeah. graduated from a 10-gallon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mine was similar. I had a, I think it was a 5-gallon, 
with two goldfish and a koi. I was growing out the koi for a pond, so I did have some plan for them. Um, but yeah, I started with a five gallon with koi and goldfish. Yeah. Then uh, from there, a 30 gallon, then a 75, and then then an eel pit under my garage. <laughs> <laughs> so I, let's let's jump into that then. What what was the deciding factor to, to put an eel pit in the Oh, system? for the eel pit, it was there. Um, so we moved into the house basically when this store was being built uh, in this location, um, March, well, March last year. Because it was your grandma's house. Yeah, it was our grandma's house. Um, so when we were moving in, like a week before we moved in, I saw the manhole in the corner. and Apparently it's been there my whole life. I had no idea. Um, but I also, when I'm not uh, in my eel pit, I go out and explore caves, tunnels, um, whatever I can find. So I immediately like, oh, there's something under there. If it's, if it's a manhole, it's, you can at least get down in it to some degree. Um, so I immediately opened it, sh- shown a flashlight around. It's like, oh, fish pond. House came with a fish pond. <laughs> An indoor. Indoor fish pond, yeah. And I've always wanted American eels in a pond just because they can survive that cold water. Well, yeah, because we went down there, uh, I guess it was probably late November. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was cold outside. It was probably, I mean, low 30s at night, if not colder. Yeah. And we went down in there, and it actually stays yeah, so fairly ambient. So it, it does get cold. Uh, the cool part is because it's eight foot underground, it actually stays about like two months temperature wise behind. So it's okay. warm through the winter and then it's cold in the summer. Okay. Um, so it's actually about like two to three months behind the actual weather on the surface. Yeah. So pretty interesting. So when it gets negative degrees outside, it still stays relatively warm enough in there that. Yeah, that, probably 40s, 50s down there. And you're obviously smart enough to know what you're allowed to put in. Uh, yeah, uh, subtropical water. So uh, mm-hmm. all of you who have those red tail cats and you know those arapaima and things that get massive, they are not for the yeah, open. A little too chilly down there. Yeah, it got about forty degrees at the coldest, so not horrible, but not great. That's uh, yeah, that's a little chilly still. A little, a little chilly for most of the fish in the store. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, we uh, so Discover Aquatics. Uh, I guess that was probably early 2017 established. Uh, we were down in Wilder, Kentucky, which is just a city down. Out in the uh, middle of nowhere. Yeah, we, yeah. It, it really was. It was a little shop. Uh, there's a, it's called Double A Highway. You go past it, and if you didn't know we were there, yeah. you would have gone right past no it. No idea, yeah. Uh, it was nice for me. I went to NKU, so I would go stop by on my lunch breaks. So we've known each other for... Since 2017, probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So six years or so now, he'd go to college and dip down the hill, and we'd chat for a while and uh, just kind of, I guess, grew a friendship from there. And, uh, you know, we, we, we kind of outgrew the Wilder spot fairly quickly, uh, but maintained until uh, March of last year, and we moved up to, to Taylor Mill here. Uh, but, yeah, we uh, just kind of, I don't know, I, I really enjoy – doing this i love the the interaction with the people and and so a lot of our regular customers became you know just good friends and and struck up a a good friendship with most of our customers uh and that that really helped out that uh you know having that that personal relate i mean that's kind of you and i started that way you just kind of popped in one day and just became friends and and now here we are working together. Yeah. Yeah, I've worked at pretty much every fish store in northern Kentucky at this point. Um, loved them all, but, yeah, this has definitely been the, the most fun, I'll say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have a good time. There's right. no doubt about that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so we uh, we jumped up here in March of last year uh, and just kind of have kind of what can we do to, to keep getting better and keep going forward and, and not just settle for what's in these four or five walls, figure out what, what we can do that's exciting and different. And, and just, I, the, I always joke around that I, I'm not a vanilla fan. So, uh, I like exciting. I like adventurous. I like pushing the bounds conservatively without going bankrupt. Uh, so that's knock down a wall. Yeah. That, you know, at some <laughs> point, maybe we expand next door. So, um, Space is running out quickly. Yeah, it really is. When I first looked at the layout and, and the, the square footage and everything like that, I, 
kind of had that thought of like, well, there's no way I'm going to fill up 2,500 yeah. square feet. And then, uh, you know, the saltwater wa- side was built because uh, back in Wilder, that was all we had. So establish that first. And, and, uh, and then, you know, okay, after we get that done, we'll move over to the fresh water. But uh, we've got a few different systems here. So started with the fish system and, and, you know, that's on one wall. And then along that, we also have an, uh, an invert corner uh, yeah the system i will just a few tanks but we keep uh, all a bunch of our inverts in there we got a bunch of anemones and uh and those kind of things so we split that off and octopus here and there baby sharks yeah we got a ghost ribbon eel in right now lots of cleaner shrimp small mana shrimp if anyone's looking for one of those pop pop yeah um and then we have the 16 foot coral tub back there too which you know i really i i was excited to see how that would come together but I don't know that I was anticipating everyone liking the look down and, and yeah. see everything. The and, little tide pool area. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I've got a rabbit fish, gold spot rabbit, uh, I've had since uh, March of 2017, actually. Uh, and Bugs is now over, about a foot. I was thinking 12, 14 inches. Yeah, probably a little over a foot. Uh, and he's, he's about that big girth-wise. He eats very well. Yeah. Uh, but that's one of those cool things that we'll go down there and feed him and I'll let you play with his venomous spines on top. Yeah, we call them <laughs> bugs. I'll, I'll look over and Nick will be holding them and, you know, just give him one of those. It's what are you doing? Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, the clams look really cool in there. Yeah, the, we got those giant durasas right now. Uh, the blue maximas look good. You can mm-hmm. pull those out and then go watch this and they just, you know, splash all over. They're, Blast the nearest person. Yeah, yeah. They, they've done that. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, so that's, uh, and then, uh, of course, as you behind us, uh, that's a Red Sea tank, so we are Red Sea dealers, and that's kind of been a, a fun progress of, uh, oh, I forgot to do that. that. It's coming right out. But yeah, we can ship Red Sea products um, anywhere in the country, so tanks, uh, supplies, we've got a shipment of uh, Red Sea ATOs, if there's any left already. Yeah, they'll be coming, coming in. in soon. Yeah. If one of these yields jumps out and gets me, I'm going to be very upset. That would be, this would be the ideal time. I've been bit four times. He's been bit once, yeah. and uh, it's never been on camera yet. No. Let's keep it that way. I, uh, on camera, that'd be the way to do so it. So these are Japanese dragon eels. Uh, for those who aren't aware, uh, what are they? About thirteen hundred a piece. Yeah. Uh, we've seen them anywhere online from from that range up to about two two grand. One to two and a half. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but we've had them since. Uh, a little bit before Christmas. Yeah, right before early, well, mid, mid-December probably. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So they've kind of become a bit of a store pet. Everybody loves coming in and seeing the eels. Uh, it's kind of ironic that you've got an eel pit at him, and yeah. we've got an eel tank here. Got but right uh, here. Yeah, these guys are pretty nifty, and we do enjoy petting them and playing with them, which is... We're in no rush to sell them. No. They, are, they are available, but... Yeah, that's one of those, like... Somebody wants one. I'd rather just get them in and keep these guys. Cause, yeah, for sure. These um, guys have become very friendly. <laughs> so they're too friendly. You know, I guess uh, since you did it on on TikTok, we they, these guys need a name. We've talked about that for a little while. Uh, so that'd be a fun, you know, YouTube, Facebook. You guys want to help us name the the dragon eels? That would be a good one. Uh, something that you guys can have some interaction with. Eel bow, mentally eel, eely dam. Ely Dan, that's one of my that's, favorites. Ely Dan's pretty good. Ely Dan. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so, uh, and then uh, and then after the saltwater side got going, we went over to the freshwater side and, uh, and, and continued building on that aspect of it. And then uh, uh, that was kind of where Trevor came aboard and then had to, had to go back to where he was. And then uh, ironically enough, the, the timing lined up perfectly yeah for you to come aboard yeah, and uh, available and, and then uh that was kind of your specialty your yeah i've been wanting to do freshwater forever so yeah it actually just timed out perfect so yeah i get to start getting in my weird oddball freshwater fish i'm always this guy gets so excited i there was <laughs> i always had a month ago yeah he walked down to, so we got a subway like three or four doors down and went down to get something to eat and came like so hopping skipping and jumping back like a <laughs> like a school kid on Halloween excited. Gotcha. Big old grin. I'm like, what did you do now? Uh, and he had found some uh, Tiger Moray eels on the freshwater side at a really good price. So he got all excited. We got to order. We got to order. And I was like, look, 
That's exciting. Yeah. Let's do it. And then we got a dozen of them in. And yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We still have a couple of them left, but those guys are doing well eating like little pigs. Yeah. But... The only true freshwater moray eel. So, like these guys, but they've even got they got an awesome pattern too. They're like yellow with black modeling. Kind of got like a little like jag jaguar tiger. Yeah, leopard, leopard and... jaguar. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Super unique, even for a saltwater moray. That's pretty colorful. Well, like those. Uh... What were those? Not Motoros. What were the uh, stingrays? The stingrays. Yeah, yeah. They were uh, the ones we had were Leopold Eye hybrids. Okay. Black. But that, you know, exciting Motoros. stuff. Just, yes, we, we got the tetras and the guppies and, and that kind of stuff too. But, uh, you know, back to the non vanilla. Like, that's mm -hmm. stuff that we get in when people walk in and just give us the, wow, I've never seen that before. Like, yeah. that really is what, right here. what excites me. Yeah. Yeah, I want to get more freshwater stingrays in for sure. Yeah, that was. Uh, so yeah, with that, then what's the some of the coolest fish you've seen in the hobby? I think I you know they're they're pretty common, but my favorite fish we've ever had was an emperor angel. It was probably every bit of twelve oh, yeah. inches. I knew this one. Um, <laughs> but every time it was hungry, it would circle around to the heater and it would swim up against it. It would just make that clank and glass that to glass, ping of glass. Yeah, yeah. And I, I'd get up and I'd throw food in there and. and if I didn't, he'd circle around that rock again, and he'd hit yeah. it again every single time. And, and mm -hmm. uh, I joked around that I trained him, but but everyone was like, no, he trained yeah. you. Yeah, that was at the old shop. That was on my yeah. lunch breaks. I'd see that. And if go, just knock it perfectly to make that noise. Yep. Yeah, and I I think at the beginning when he did it, I'm guessing he just kind of rubbed, had a an itch or something. But because it was such a cool fish, I just, you know, oh, hey, let me just go ahead and throw some food in there just in case. And, and it was just pellets, but... Yeah, he loved it. Yeah, Dude ate him. like a pig. Uh, but Trained I think that was like my favorite. The amount of personality that he had uh, and how big he was. He just, and he wasn't aggressive or anything like that, but he just, he had a presence about him. For sure, yeah. Always in that front front tank there. Yeah. How about you? What's your favorite? Uh, coolest I've ever seen is probably a clear nose guitar fish in a store. You don't see those every day. Yeah. Every, every few years, if that. Yeah. Um, I don't think I've seen them on a wholesale list. Have you recently? I don't know. It's been... That's why we got to get the second tub and make it salt water. Shark pond. Yeah, well, I guess back to future plans. <laughs> More space needed. Uh, we had the tub on the freshwater side, almost similar to what we got in the coral side. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's it's been dry for a couple months now. Probably December-ish. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just... The space really didn't uh, wasn't effective for what we wanted on the freshwater side. Yeah, yeah, because instead of having a, a big group of cool fish, it just ends up being one aggressive fish. So yeah, we had an Oscar one time, and again, he was probably at least ten, if not twelve probably inches. A cool yeah, uh, we'll, we'll find the video somewhere. But Nick's over there dangling his finger yeah. over the water. That was he, a fun one. he jumps out and just gives him a snatch right on his hand and. Mm -hmm. Uh, unfortunately, we did have a little kid come in here. He had actually just come from the aquarium. Yeah. And uh, at the aquarium, they have a touch tank, so you can go in there, and the cleaner shrimp will jump on your hands. And, and you know, ooh, it's exciting and cool. Well, he came in and was like, oh, there's a fish that wants to see me. And uh, the Oscar did give him a bit of a a bit of a bit bite. Yeah. And then the kid holds his hand up, and, yeah, it, yeah. Was, uh, it, was, it was not real pretty. But uh, thankfully, it was... It was okay. That's what the signs are for. Yeah. Eric, sorry. Hands out. Sorry. Yeah. Um, and ironically enough, what was that, last week that uh, we were kind of having a little bit of a team meeting here and going through what the, uh, I'll call them expansion plans, just yeah, kind of the going forward plans. and uh, Summer plans. Yeah, yeah, summer. Uh, and there was a little kid on the freshwater side oh, who was yeah. talking about how much he loved eels. And, yeah. I said, we'll go over and see Nick, and he'll show you the eels in the, the Red Sea tank. So he walks over, and Mom kind of helped him out. And, and Nick, uh, yeah, what what better way to lure out an eel than with your finger? Yeah, my fourth bite. And uh, and uh, the eel latched on and, and really just didn't want to let go. I guess technically it was my fifth bite, too. So I, I pulled the eel maybe, maybe 10 inches out of the water, and then I was hitting him with my left arm, trying to get him to unattach, and then he actually bit my right hand, too, so... These are the things that keep me up at night. Yeah. Just, it's a fun time. <laughs> is Nick going to lose a digit tomorrow? <laughs> it's, it's a cool animal. The cool, cool ones can bite me. The child was terrified. He was petrified. Oh, my God. This is horrifying. Mom was all about she it. Like, this, cool. this yeah. is really cool. It's a legit pet store right here. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to try and keep all of our fingers and uh, uh, 
luckily, none of the bites have been. Nah, it's a dab of super glue when I'm good. It works out. I stay up at night. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so that's kind of future plans with that tub that, that we used on the freshwater side for some of that bigger stuff. Uh, I think we're going to do some sort of kind of like a shark ray softy system, maybe some bigger fish at some point, but, uh, shark pond would be really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, just back to the excitement and getting stuff in that, uh, that you don't have to pay $45 to go to the aquarium to see. You can come here and we got all the neatness here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, gets people in the door for sure. But yeah, that's like when I go through the list and, and you know, uh, on either side, you look at it and you go, okay, what do I need? What's going to sell? And what's cool? What's the difference? Tomorrow morning, two flashing tile fish are on their way. Uh, that's one I haven't seen in quite a while. If, uh, oh, yeah. You're unaware of those guys. We will have a video uploaded tomorrow of those. In the meantime, just Google flashing tile fish. That's a whole lot of neatness. Very, very neat fish, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of, you know, especially through the summer to, to keep uh, keep everyone excited. Instead of going to the pool, come here. Uh, we we want to try and get some of that, that cool stuff in and, and just keep it exciting. Yeah. Um, Any but, other favorite fish? real oddballs you don't see too often that rhinopius we had that was really cool that was a good size one too yeah they, the, the vibrant color of them yeah bright red um, like a scorpion fish bigger yeah that yeah. was uh that was pretty wild yeah i love all the frog fish we were getting there for a while too yeah those guys were selling great uh the starry night octo or the uh the wonder puss yeah the wonder puss was awesome yeah the starry night too just starry night he was yeah 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 that's okay. uh I, you know they're i guess kind of plain but those white spot bamboo sharks, as, as much as they eat. I just posted a video on YouTube, uh, on our YouTube, yeah, of them swarming my hand while I was feeding them. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, that's the cool exotic stuff that, that we get in that is still feasible in the hobby. Uh, and, and, you know, most of you have a tank that's that's relatively good enough size for those guys. It, um, you know, especially when they're doing things like that, eating out of our hands. Yeah, when they're that easy. I mean, it, it just, it's as easy as any other fish at that point yeah yeah that's uh i don't know i think the the other exciting part isn't just like the one-off cool fish here and there mm -hmm. it's the diversity of cool stuff that we get in all the yeah, time and, for sure. and uh, instead of getting six of this or eight of that just getting a couple of a bunch of different things so that yeah yeah when, every list i look for like two or three things that i just haven't seen and eight months and that was kind yeah. of the flashing tile fish i haven't seen those guys in a list in a while and mm -hmm. just happened to be kind of messing around with the list last night and they were on there and I click click yeah might as well yeah they are they're such a unique fish too yeah. the way they flash well and i think that's the other part that you guys don't really see that that uh nick and i have to fish through <laughs> is is the different suppliers we have uh, a lot of them come from california we do have a couple in the Caribbean that we use for, for the Caribbean type of fish. Uh, but we really want to make sure that when we get things, that they're quality, that they do well, that they're not going to be one that you have an issue with. And, and, and we do have a few suppliers that we don't use a ton yeah. because we don't feel that their quality is adequate enough. Mm -hmm. uh, That's the good part about bring in. both of us doing it so long is yeah. we kind of already got a game plan coming into it about what we who is reliable who's not yeah. it's still a learning process here and there but for the most part we have had a pretty smooth ship so far yeah and i was busting on his chops yesterday for that uh we had an order coming from seagrest in florida uh and we kind of had set a budget and nick said yeah. uh i'll see the budget and i'll just go right past just it just a little bit yeah so <laughs> we uh when you but, need plants too it adds a few hundred dollars <laughs> ah, don't worry about the budget that's, that's a that's yeah, yeah. got to do what you got to do. See if Eric is mine with, uh, you mind if I just don't pay the whole rent this yeah, month? Yeah, yeah. We had some, <laughs> some empty gaps in there. But, yeah, that's, uh, so we'll go through and I'll go, hey, what do you need? Hey, this is what I need. Uh, get together and kind of just have a, a good back and forth and, uh, and and have a good relationship. Like, I know, I'm going to throw my old boss, but I, I work with a guy in, at Children's Hospital and, and 
it was just kind of one of those, like, every day you went to work just dreading what was going to happen. And I always said if I could be a boss, like, I would not want anyone to hate working with four around me. And, like, that's something I really try and strive for is to make sure that everyone enjoys working here. Mm-hmm. It's a fun time. Yeah, it's definitely my favorite store I've worked in over yeah. the years. I just I enjoyed them all, but, yeah. But, like, if you hate life. Mm-hmm and you hate your job, yeah. then you're just not going to be happy being here. And this is one of those places that when people come in, I want you to, I want it to be an escape from your every day and to come in and just be able to look at the cool stuff and not worry about, oh, look at Mr. Mopey behind the counter. Like, what a Debbie Downer he <laughs> is. <laughs> Get the cool fish coming in. Yeah. Keep it interesting. Yeah. Um, speaking of interesting, uh, you're... Uh, so I guess you started in July last year. Yeah. And right after that, you were like, look, I already have a trip planned. Oh, I'm yeah. going to Arizona. Yeah, I took a month in between. Yeah. I had a lot going on that month. Yeah. But you really enjoy those mm-hmm. going out and... Oh, yeah. So that's part of it is I want to see the fish in a tank looking beautiful, but I also want to go experience it. So I want to go see that fish in the wild, um, see what it's living with, see what else is out kind of in the fish's habitat because you went down to uh i just got back from florida yeah the everglades yeah and uh you guys probably know that there's quite a few things down there that have taken over unfortunately but um we saw schools of 100 jewel cichlids um oscars peacock bass peacock bass yeah placostomus uh and a lot of like fish that are so invasive they're illegal to own now like snakeheads and walking catfish i love the walking catfish i wish i could have one well, we, thankfully up here in Kentucky, we really don't run into any sort of, uh, mm-hmm. we are actually pretty restricted on, on some things that, you know, you wouldn't even think of hedgehogs. Yeah. Um, cave fish. We can't have blind, blind cave, cave tetras. Yeah. I would have stocked my eel pivot with them if I could have. Yeah. Piranhas are, uh, you know, we're uh, what, eight minutes from the, the yeah. Ohio river in, in Ohio, but, uh, over there you can get all the piranha and, and some of that stuff. But, uh, here in Kentucky, you we can't, and, and ironically enough, when we go on the lists, uh, if we were to want to order something that is illegal, most of them have on their restricted item, and we can't even we can't even see the price of them, yeah. um, let alone attempt to order them. So that's, I guess, in, in a responsible manner, a lot of the wholesalers are very in tune with what state-to-state laws are. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if you're in that state, you just cannot order. And I know one of them, if you have multiple locations, uh, I guess Seagrass and Sump Bed do that. Yeah. You go on whatever location you're looking at, uh, and then the laws will be specific to that. Yeah, instead Georgia of just versus a, Florida. Yeah, instead of just being a whole company and, and the laws applying to all of them, they actually break down by which location you're ordering for. Mm-hmm. Um, Caymans. <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, no alligators, crocodiles, came in anything like that. We're uh, look. I don't. Let's be honest here. I don't know that anyone really needs to own one of those. I mean, it could be an alligator pit. <laughs> it would be cool. One giant alligator. Yeah, and then you come stumbling in here, missing yeah. a, an arm or a leg, yeah. and I go, wait a minute here. Couple, couple limbs. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, so for your safety, it's probably probably the yields yeah. are a little safer. Yeah, but. Uh, but yeah, what uh, I, I don't know what what anything you know kind of take you from just being a a regular pet store employee to wanting to to take it into the yield pit and then you know on to TikTok and no, I mean mainly it's just I've always been doing it. Um, I've always been looking for like the weirdest fish I could find. Uh, I guess when I got my start, I was doing you know the little tiny goldfish tank, um, mm-hmm. but then eventually that led to uh, I got really into catfish. Okay. Um, like the driftwood catfish, yeah. like those little honeycomb catfish. Okay. Uh, jaguar catfish. Hoplos? Hoplos I love, but okay. now a little bit different. Okay. Um, but yeah, I've got six hoplos at home now. Um, but yeah, just a bunch of weird oddball catfish. And then that really shows you the South American catfish are just super diverse. So you can get like super focused on the little things of the hobby that the hobby overall, like you won't even, like it's just scientific names at that level. Well, it's like the plecos are just L. Yeah, you know, and then fill in, a, fill in a number on that yeah. one, mm-hmm. um, which... But yeah, there's all different little, like, subgroups of the hobby. Um, so then I got into stingrays. Um, I got a 300-gallon yeah. uh, yeah. fiberglass aquarium in my parents' basement. That's when it really went, like, oh, there it goes. It's 
When your major at NKU was multimedia, or? Uh, it was it was biology originally because okay. oh I want to do this with my wife. Yeah. Okay. Um, failed chemistry twice, maybe three times, um, and then I said no more of that, and then I got a media degree, and it just happened to work out with the social media stuff. Well, that's kind of where I was going with that. Yeah. So you enjoy this stuff, and you're yeah. very knowledgeable. So yeah, in the... I've been posting videos online since. Probably middle school. I mean, my YouTube page probably goes back to at least 2014, um, if not earlier. So mm -hmm. I've always been like, I, I figured out ah, I'll see cool animals in my life. I might as well throw up a video about that animal here and there. I see cool ones and I go, hey, Nick, come over here and help me out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's uh, it works out. A little above my pay grade right now. Mm -hmm. but, but yeah, so I've just always been wanting to travel, wanting to go see cool fish, wanting to keep cool fish. Uh, but yeah, the downward spiral really was probably my stingray tank. Yeah. Yeah, I remember pictures of that. Yeah, it was cool. It was a cool tank. It was a giant fiberglass tub with a glass front. Mm -hmm. uh, real cool setup. I need to probably repost a video of that. No one's seen that since 2017. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I had Funny Fish Aquatics there for... Uh, yeah, the basement. Yeah, I did it out of, out of uh, pretty much out of the basement there for a while. Um, you know, had a, a partner here and there and uh, just kind of... Did a bunch of frag swaps, so we'd pack up all the stuff and drive here, drive there. We went down to the craziest frag swap I ever did was we left at like 1 or 2 in the morning, picked up my buddy in Burlington, and then drove all the way down to Spartanburg, South Carolina. Oh, man. Were, it, you, were you mainly coral or fish, too? I was mainly just coral at okay. that point. All right. um, but it was at the end of January, so we we're going through Knoxville. And all those windy roads in the mountains in January, yeah. and it was good and slick. Yeah, that's Gatlinburg right there. Yeah, but it yeah. was, but we were on a time crunch because the swap started at, you know, yeah. ten or eleven or whatever. Car so full of live animals. I yeah. really didn't budget a whole lot of time extra. So then we got down there and set up, did the whole swap, and then uh, tore it down and drove all the way back and got in at I don't know one or two in the morning. So it was basically. Oh, man. 10 hours of driving or eight hours about driving each way and then uh an eight hour frag swap or whatever it was a long day that's all i all i can say was it about a big that swap it was a decent yeah, one in okay. fact um larry lrs uh mm -hmm. was handing out samples that was when he was just like just getting going oh, so cool. we're probably talking 2011 or 2012 yeah that uh, he's probably one of the bigger uh you yeah. guys now yeah i mean now looking back on it i remember when his son was handing out samples and i kind of looked at him and was like i got an eight hour car ride home i don't yeah. know that this is gonna last me but uh you know i guess that's the cool part being in it as long as i have that you look back and see people that have kind of grown throughout the years as well and you're like oh i remember when you were yeah just you know knee high to a grasshopper i remember when I had a customer come in the other day that i remember um ashton when he was a young kid with his dad going around at the frag swaps and he came out and he owns his own business now too and it's just like yeah. god i remember mm -hmm. way back in the day when when that happened but uh yeah yeah but people like that lrs guy he'd be cool to reach out to too yeah see if he'd want to do something like this sometime yeah, yeah. for sure so you know again like we said at the beginning that is something that uh, i'd love to hear from you guys as to kind of who or what you'd love for us to reach out to or talk to or or, or bring aboard just to have the conversation and and uh, we definitely want to get, uh, I know I've talked to SDC, so uh, our rep out there, you know, just kind of a walk through how they get fish in, biota. Uh, we got a few different uh, salt, saltwater and freshwater wholesalers, and every one of them does something a little bit different. So having those perspectives, obviously LRS is food, so that'd be uh, Yeah, see if anyone from Red Sea wants to get on. Yeah, that'd be a good one. I'll mm -hmm. contact Matt and kind of let him uh, go through all the new products and and that kind of stuff that, that they've got going on. But, uh, but yeah, there's all kinds of fun stuff going on here. We, uh, I guess this is kind of, kind of our shout out to yeah. expansion plans online. Um, yes. Yeah. Definitely want to move, move more towards online. There's definitely a whole lot we can do with that. And, and that also gives us the freedom to kind of get more unique species. I was just um, going to say, yeah, we can't order three horn sharks, but if we're, hugely popular across the u.s then we can order three horn sharks yep so by <laughs> us bringing more stuff in to send out that gives you guys here locally a, a much better opportunity to see stuff some crazy that, stuff and yeah. get, get first pick of it too yeah that it, i wouldn't have ordered otherwise if if we didn't have a, a good online 
following or gathering that we could uh, kind of go to for those more expensive or exotic different things. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that's a... Uh... Guys, it's been it's been awesome. Uh, first episode, so we'll uh, uh, we'll get together and see what our schedules are. But we're gonna try and do this about every other week. A uh, get together, and then uh, like we said, have our guest speakers on. In between there, we're gonna start doing some fun. Uh, I don't wanna say experience, but tutorials. Yeah, there'll be a whole lot of YouTube uh, stuff coming out, and we'll probably go through and like do kind of product testing and like show you how to set it up. Um, we could go like product by product. Mm-hmm. Spend a, a week on Hannah checkers, a week on different brands of lighting. Setting up skimmers, yeah. tuning your lights. Tuning lights, why we like this light more than this one, why this one's good, yeah. different things like that. There's just so much in this hobby to talk about. And then I also want to be doing like care guides for different fish, different things like that. How to set up a tank. Just your simple, you know, I guess that's kind of one of those things. Like we get a lot of questions on a daily basis. What should I do here? What should I do there? Uh, and, and not that we don't want to hear from you guys, but we also want to have a whole uh, library of of content that we can just say of go to oh, you need to program your red sea lights here's yep. our tutorial check out our youtube page it's two months ago your skimmer's bubbling over here's our here's that one and just mm-hmm. just kind of not again not that we don't want to talk to you but just that way we can have it there and, and you can watch it you know on a loop as many times as you need to, to that's the most helpful thing is when you're going through getting ready to do it just rewind 20 seconds okay what was i supposed to do um, so that would really help out, I think, a lot of people. Yeah. Um, but again, not to beat a dead horse, we're going to rely on you guys for a lot of that, too. So if you're looking for something uh, specifically, if you're wanting to, hey, I've always wanted to know how to do this or that, that really helps us with feedback to know what you guys are looking for. Obviously, we uh, we get the questions on a daily basis in here from you guys. But, uh, but yeah, if there's ever anything specifically... We'd love to hear from you just so that we're making sure the content is what you're looking for. Yeah. But, yeah, I guess without further ado. Uh, handy pre- Andy. Handy Andy, Eel Daddy. <laughs> uh, appreciate you tuning in on this uh, wonderful Thursday. But uh, we'll see you soon. Yep. Sounds good. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs>